Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thank you for being here this morning on this second Sunday after Easter. Uh, today we are going to be uh, looking at uh, the story of that very first Easter, uh, as well as what happened the week after and the hope that we have for day many weeks later. Um, we remember that Jesus is risen and uh, that we now share in his name that can save Jesus. Our opening hymn. Here I am, Lord, please rise. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin. Amen. Hey. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We now pause for a moment to reflect on our sin and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Since we have received the forgiveness of Christ, we now share with one another the peace of Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the psalm of Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud, and telling all your wondrous deeds. Hear me and try me, O Lord, test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes. Glory dwells in grace abounds in the habitation of your O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me, and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. First lesson is from Acts chapter 4. 
Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of the land or houses sold them and brought the possessions of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as, as any had need. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning on this beautiful day. Second lesson is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was... I'm sorry. <laughs> with the Father, and was made manifest to us that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and that truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the, the appropriation for our sins, and not for, for ours, but only for also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. 
but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated for the hymn. Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, as just read. Poor Doubting Thomas. Without a doubt, Thomas got stuck with one of the worst nicknames in Christian history. And the worst and most hurtful thing is about his name. It is most fitting. It's what he did. He doubted the resurrection. Disbelieving was a sin. And it stuck with him. It went from a verb to an adjective to a noun to an idiom still used today. The word describing his shameful unfaithfulness, the action of his greatest moment of weakness was attributed to him, labeling him, defining him, and added to his title. Probably not while he was alive, but certainly at some point in history. The event found in our lesson for today is one of the few moments written about Thomas in Scripture. The account of Thomas is well known by many, and doubting has become his legacy. Even to this day, the pain of that week spent in weak faith is placed before his name. Now, to be fair, we don't know all that much about doubting Thomas. In fact, there are really only two other places of significance recorded in all of Scripture in which he speaks. The first is in John chapter 11. In short, Jesus' close friend Lazarus was dead, and Jesus was planning to go to him, 
even though the Pharisees were actively seeking to stone him to death. Many of the disciples warned against the trip. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas courageously said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. The second place Thomas is quoted is in John chapter 11, when Jesus said to his disciples, You know the way to where I am going. And Thomas speaks up and very honestly says, Actually, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? An important and honest question which leads to Jesus' famous re response, I am the way and the truth and the life. Now, both of those passages are pretty big events in the life of Jesus, yet the disciple is not remembered by them. After all, he's not called Courageous Thomas or Honest Thomas. Those would be great. But no, Thomas is not known by his moment of strength, but rather by his lowest moment of weakness, sin, and lack of faith. And perhaps that is for our benefit, that we also may gain hope from the way his faith was raised by Jesus once again. And remember that even when we, sinful men and women, fail to trust Jesus in moments of weakness like Thomas, the powerful name of the living word is mighty to save, and the risen Christ is our source of faith. That said, consider this. Who, in God's name, are you? In this week's sermon, we will be reminded that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was strong enough to raise the faith of his fallen followers, like the uncertain women, mourning Mary, denying Simon, clueless Cleopas, doubting Thomas, and the skeptical disciples. And his name remains just as powerful for the sake of all of us sinful people today. So let's begin by remembering what happened the morning of that first Easter Sunday. Most importantly, Jesus Christ, who was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and left the tomb. Very early that morning, some of his fe uh, female followers, including Mary Magdalene, left to visit the grave with spices so that they could finish properly preparing the dead body of Jesus. So right off the bat, we see uncertainty because they were expecting to find his lifeless body still lying in the grave. And as they were on their way, wondering who would roll the stone away from them, a great earthquake occurred as an angel descended from heaven and rolled the rock away. Uh, it's commonly believed that the first Easter was actually uh, AD 33 on April 5th. Uh, if you remember April 5th, uh, we had a little earthquake here ourselves. <laughs> Pretty neat. <laughs> when they arrived and saw the empty grave, they were shocked and afraid. Seeing Jesus was missing, Mary Magdalene ran away to inform John and Simon Peter, believing Jesus' body was stolen by robbers, either common or elected. <clears throat> The other women stayed and entered the grave and were perplexed because they could not find the body of Jesus. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Naturally, the women left to tell the others but then they stopped dead in their tracks. And for a while, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. While they were still dragging their feet in uncertainty, Mary Magdalene finally found John and Simon Peter and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And the three of them started running back to the tomb. John arrived first and waited outside. Then Simon arrived and went right inside. John followed. Everything was neatly folded and everything worth stealing was still there. The only thing missing was the body of Jesus. So it certainly didn't look like the job of grave robbers. After seeing this, John believed, but Simon left denying and marveling at what he had just seen. 
John and Simon then headed home. But Mary stayed behind, weeping bitterly, repeatedly stooping down to look into the tomb and mourning Jesus' missing body. Then Jesus spoke to her. At first she thought he was the gardener and asked about the body. But then Jesus said her name. When she heard it, she recognized him and believed in his resurrection. At this, Mary stopped mourning. Jesus asked her to tell the disciples, and she left. Then Jesus appeared to the other women who were frozen in their uncertainty. Upon seeing him, they believed in his resurrection. He then requested that they go and tell the disciples, and they went. Sometime later, Jesus then appeared to denying Simon, and although we don't know the specific details, it's fair to assume that he too believed in the resurrection because he also went to tell the other disciples. Jesus also then appeared to two disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus, although they also did not recognize him. One of them was clueless Cleopas, who after lamenting the events of Jesus' death, said right to Jesus, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. Jesus responded to his disbelief by reminding them of the scriptures about himself. Later, as they shared the supper with their Lord, Jesus broke the bread and they recognized him. At this, clueless Cleopas and the other disciple with him believed in the resurrection, and they too left to tell, like all the others, the remaining disciples. Soon they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together and said, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them. Which brings us to the first part of our reading for today. Now we know from scripture that when the uncertain women and mourning Mary and denying Simon and clueless Cleopas told the remaining disciples about the resurrection, they were skeptical. They did not believe them. They wanted to believe in the resurrection, but it seemed like that, that seemed like an idle tale to them. And they did not recall the three times Jesus himself prophesied to them. They still felt powerless, helpless, hopeless, and afraid which is why all the doors were locked, the windows were shut, and they were all laying low in the room like a tomb. That is, until Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw, saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from many, it is withheld. <clears throat> Finally, the rest of the skeptical disciples believed in the resurrection. But there was still one left to tell, because Thomas was absent. So they went to find him and told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Thus, Thomas questioned their witness, doubted the good news and received his shameful name. The other disciples had seen the rolled stone, the empty tomb and the folded linens they had experienced Jesus gathering in their presence, received his Holy Spirit, remembered him in the breaking of the bread, heard his word of peace spoken to them, and witnessed the living and risen Lord from the dead in flesh and blood. However, even after hearing all of this, Thomas had no peace. He was absent that Sunday in body and soul, broken, troublesome, and sorrowful. Thus his mind was full of doubt. He was crushed by Jesus' crucifixion, 
and he still felt powerless in his disbelief. But at least he was honest about it. He didn't hide it. Now don't get me wrong, Thomas was by no means right to doubt the resurrection because he sinned and it was a disgrace. As it is written in Romans 14, whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. But yet that which would soon be given to him by Jesus was powerful grace. For scripture also says, as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, for God has welcomed him. It is before his own master that he stands or falls, for the Lord is able to make him stand. This is not only how we ought act towards fellow repentant followers of Christ and his church, but it is also exactly how Jesus acted towards his crushed disciple Thomas. That which Thomas was seeking, though not truly missing, had not yet been seen. Deep down in the quivering remains of his fragile faith in the promised Messiah, Thomas knew that the peace of God, forgiveness, life, and eternal salvation could not be so without a living, breathing Savior in flesh and blood. The words of Jesus predicting his death and resurrection had been far from him for seemingly endless days by now. In his mind, they were tragically buried along with Jesus' body on Good Friday. Thus, he needed to be reminded of his Lord's saving power. Just like the grave on Easter Sunday, he needed the scriptures to be opened for him. Like the tombs, the stone sealing the tomb, Thomas needed his stumbling block rolled away from him. He needed a spiritual earthquake to shake him awake from his grave sin of despair and disbelief. He needed to be resurrected in faith by the powerful grace of God, his risen and forgiving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thomas had a serious question, and one week later, Christ mercifully raised both hands to answer it before he even had a chance to ask it in person, saying, Peace be with you. Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, before Jesus' appearance, Thomas spent an entire week in spiritual weakness, burdened by death, powerless in despair, and buried in doubt. His faith was gravely struggling. Indeed, it's true that the heavenly peace Thomas needed as a sinful man could only be given by the divine sacrifice of Jesus. The wounds of his unfaithfulness and all our transgressions could only be healed by the scars of Christ. Truly, the man who was slain was the only one who could save, meaning the flesh of the risen Christ had to be the same as the crucified Christ. Unless they were the same, there would be no change, no forgiveness, victory, peace, hope, or life. Thus, Thomas found the peace he was seeking, as we do, in the missing pieces of flesh from Jesus' hands and side and feet. Still certainly, the testimonies of the women, Mary Magdalene, Simon Peter, John, Cleopas, and the other disciples should have been enough for him, which is why Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. After reflecting on the uncertain women, mourning Mary, denying Simon, clueless Cleopas, and the skeptical disciples and doubting Thomas, something is made very clear to us. Without Jesus, we are powerless to believe. And the same is true today, as it says in Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. The risen Christ took the sin of the disciples and raised them in faith. Our Lord did not leave them in the shame of their uncertainty, mourning, denying, cluelessness, skepticism, or doubting. Instead, he took it all away, reminding them that their sins were put to death with him, that their hope for eternal life was resurrected from the grave, that the peace of heaven was standing right there with them and would forever stand for them. By grace through faith, he led them to salvation showed them the way and welcomed them in a new name, his own name, 
as it is written, there is no other name <coughs> under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Thanks be to Jesus that we are not defined by our worst characteristics, labeled with our weakest sinful moments, or forever remembered in God's eyes by names like Bleak Blake, Proud Paul, Blunt Brook, Cold Cole, Bad Brad, Slick Rick, Mad Bam, Sick Chris, Sad Sam, Rough Russ, Drunk Buck, Cross Ross, Mean Dean, Crude Jude, Weak Zeke, Cruel Jewel, Dane Zane, Lou Lou, Fake Frank, Ruthless Ruth, Scared Jared, Gloomy Gus, Tricky Dick, Kurt Curtis, Sneaky Pete, Crass Gladys, Rudy, Rude Rudy, Peeping Tom, Petty Penny, Snooze and Susan, Nervous Nelly, Skeevan Steven, Noxus Nettie, Brutal Brutus, Body Lottie, Frigid Frida, Angry Gary, Idle Ivan, Judgy Judy, Owen Owen, Spiteful Shelby, Aaron Aaron, Flaky Finley, Taken Caitlin, Snobby Robbie, Lion Ryan, Balin Balin, Quittin Quittin, Slutty Marcy, Cheatin Keaton, Moanin Minnie, Warren Warren, Crooked Courtney, Warren Lauren, Timmy, Timid Timmy, Carnal Carol, Rigid Reggie, Feral Daryl, Thorny Tory, Evil Ethel, Giridi Gracie, Pushy Preston, Missy Missy, <laughs> Robin Robin, Druggy Duggy, Thieven Tegan, Amos Laney, Swearin' Sharon, Jerky Jerry, Reckless Alex, Idle Dolly, Wrestlin' Weston, Nosy Rosie, Complainin' Jane, Brayin' Brayden, Flippin' Philip, Broken Brooklyn, Violent Violet, Braggin' Brandon, Borish Boris, Careless Clara, Leavin' Leavin', Cunning Cory, Wailin' Wailin', Dirty Harry, Baron Baron, Snarky Darcy, Stealin' Lustin, Whiny Winnie, Twisted Tristan, Lacy, Lazy Lacy, Dylan Dylan, Crazy Stacy, Wretched Gretchen, Crabby Gabby, Arrogant Grayson, Grabby Danny, Spurious George, <laughs> Picky Whitney, Cussin Justin, Prickly Brittany, Uncaring Karen, Wiley Riley, Undevious De Devon, <laughs> Riley Riley, Perverted Burning, Roaring Rory, Anxious Alexis, Sullied Sully, Sally, Jealous Julius, Bess Bossy Bessie, Cowardly Howard, Sitton, De Silly Billy, Know It All Noah, Lusty Lucy, Withholdin' Holden, Caddy, Kathy, Hecklin Hector, X John Johnny, Bitter Britta, Blasphemous Barry, Sarcastic Sarah, Negative Nancy, Fibbin Fabian, Dubious Debbie, Gluttonous Gavin, Unfriendly Freddy, Vindictive Vincent, Conniving Connie, Heartless Harriet, Honorary Marjorie, Conceited Cameron, Immoral Merrill, Ev Evasive Evelyn, Slanderous Skyler, Harassin Harrison, Envious Darius, Pill Poppin' Marilyn, Adulterous Atticus, Gossipin' Jocelyn, Meddlin' Madeline, Bullyin' Gillian, or even Killed a Man Killian. If I forgot your name, I am sorry. You know, occasionally as a pastor, you write something, and then when you start reading it, <laughs> you really hate yourself. And that's okay. <laughs> Because that is not how God remembers us, nor how we ought think of ourselves, nor how we ought view others. Christ paid too high a price to forgive our sins, for human lives to bear such lowly titles. Rather, by faith, we share in Jesus' most powerful moment, his resurrection over all sin and death in the grave, and are blessed with his name. Thus, as followers of Jesus, we are called Christians, and as his forgiven congregation, we bear the name Emmanuel, God with us, and what an honor that is. If we want to walk and live with Jesus, we must not keep one foot in the grave. So don't die alone with your name, defined by the sinful shame of your weakest moment. As it is written in Romans 10, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So remember the saving name in which you were baptized. Remember you were cleansed of sin, sent his Holy Spirit, received the peace of forgiveness, given the grace and gift of faith, and declared a child of God through Jesus. Are you restless and seeking peace? Remember the Sabbath. Hear the gospel read and preached and rest in the truth of his resurrection. As our lesson said, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Are you feeling helpless in seeking his presence? Remember the Sabbath. Gather faithfully, be welcomed in weakness by your family of believers, and be strengthened in the company of Jesus. 
As your Savior said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Are you feeling confused and weak like Cleopas on Emmaus? Remember the Sabbath. Share the Lord's Supper and break bread in remembrance. Believe the words of Jesus when he says, Take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood, given and shed for your forgiveness, risen and living for your salvation. Touch and see like Thomas. Here I am. I am present. Put out your hand. Lift up your eyes. Feel deep inside. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And may the body and blood of I, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Arise in faith, depart in peace, and live in me. As Jesus knows, or as Thomas knows all too well, a lot can happen in a week. And by the end, our faith may be weak. So seek the strength of the risen Christ. Every Sunday is Easter morning, and Jesus is ready to mercifully welcome us. The good news of his resurrection never loses its heavenly power. On that very first Easter, the living word, the risen Christ, was strong enough to raise the faith of Mary and the women, John and Simon, Cleopas and the other disciples. One week later, the living word, the risen Christ, was strong enough to raise the faith of Thomas. And today, 103,885 weeks later, the living word, the risen Christ, is still strong enough to raise the faith of all of us. 112 years to the date after the very first Easter service here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. This very day, about one-third of the world, over two billion people alive on the earth, have heard the gospel of the living word, believe in the risen Christ, and share the blessed name we bear, Christian. Of course, that's not including the multitude of believers like Thomas who have been lifted to heaven in the last 1,991 years since that first Easter. And God only knows the number of faithful men and women living in his kingdom now since Adam and Eve were created. And that is the power that we hold and trust in today. As it says in 1 Corinthians, God raised the Lord and will raise us up also by his power. In other words, when we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, someday too, when he returns, we shall have empty tombs. Our gravestones will roll and we shall live in his name and see the Lord risen in body and soul. That said, remember that this is who you are in God's name. By the power of the risen Christ, believe and be saved by the grace through faith. Remember his redeeming work and call upon his saving name and forever trust in the resurrection. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by the resurrection of your Son, Adopt all who believe in him. Receive us as your newborn children and nourish our faith by the pure spiritual milk of your word that we may dwell in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord, Almighty God, you have declared peace between God and man in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
receive our thanks for the authority given to your church on earth and grant the ministers of your church who faithfully carry out their office and pronounce the free forgiveness of sins upon all repentant sinners. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, as your people are united in common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your peace flows from the risen and glorious wounds of Christ through your church and into the lives of all your faithful people. Bless and direct Christians' parents that your forgiveness will be freely shared in their homes and their, that each family would live together in your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you appointed rulers and officials for the sake of order and peace. Bless those that you have placed in authorities over us in federal, state, and local government. Give them the desire to serve with integrity and honor to work for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we praise your son's resurrection from the dead and draw strength from his ascension before you, where he, where he ever stands for us on our high pri- as our high priest. Have mercy on the sick and those in need. Especially, we continue our prayers for Lynn Phoebe, hospitalized with heart issues. We also pray for Laurie, Diane, Olivia, Kyle, Francis, Kate, Janet, Jeannie, Steve, Delara, Sarah, Peyton, Joanne, Kathy, Craig, Doug, Christopher, Gary, Tom, Pat, Diane, Wally, Arthur, Raymond, Nancy, and Joe, all who are being treated for cancer. We pray also for Sheridan, Gerard, Jake, Paul, Susan, Mary Beth, Billy, Heather, and Janet. In prayers of thanksgiving of answered prayers for Kyle, Alexa, and 11-year-old Willow, who is now cancer-free. Graciously receive our prayers of intersection and hear them for Jesus' sake. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, the word of life was made flesh, suffered death, and is risen in victory. Give us his body and blood in the bread and wine, that we may have forgiveness of sins and fellowship with you. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tears from their face. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace and for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the Holy Sacrament, that through them we may have comfort and the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may heartily believe your word and through the Holy Sacrament establish our faith day by day until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I've been gone for a couple weeks, so I don't know. I see that things change. So just take a moment to fill out your worship fellowship card, okay? And if you have any prayers concerned, please place them on the back. Uh, I do know that we get together on Wednesdays and we pray over them, and then we put them on the list so we can pray as a, com- as a community. Um, other than that, I don't know any else. I have to read the bulletin. 
Um, so we continue with our offerings. Please rise for the offertory. disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We continue with the Agnes Day.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending him for this morning for all the saints. Oh, 